us bugging. Hey guys, how y'all doing out there in the VW world? This is G-Man with Just Bugging. I got the 72 Super Beetle motor out here, my personal car that I've been restoring for a while. I have an interested buyer tomorrow to come and possibly commit on it, and uh, then I'll throw it into the actual workload instead of when I can fit it in if they do commit to it. So I figured I'd get it out. Uh, we already put the transmission up in it. It's looking nice in there. I got a connect the CV joints. We uh, tuned this up the other day, Thursday, Mike and I, and set the timing and all. And I'm going back through and checking my valve adjustment. Just got the door panels all in yesterday. It's looking really nice. And I'll be happy to inform you all that a young woman has committed to the purchase of this vehicle. So it is no longer for sale. And we decided we we're gonna get on the disc brake conversion. We are going to remove the struts and the brake assembly and set them aside and I uh, have to get, get out the disc brakes and then I'm going to disassemble, not today, but disassemble the struts that are for the disc brakes and rebuild them and possibly drop it about an inch and a half or so. I think they traditionally sit too high in the front. So that's what we're going to be doing now. We've got the drum brakes and the struts removed. Now I'm going to get, I have the struts and the, the whole assembly and they're brand new. Uh, of course they've been assembled onto some, a chassis and somebody never used it. So I'm going to have the, I'm going to sandblast the rotors and then have them turn so they look brand new. And disassemble the entire strut, sandblast all the parts that I'm going to reuse and buy the kit, the lowering kit and probably low it an inch, an inch and a half. I haven't decided yet. I'm gonna kind of investigate, research a little bit this evening. So stay tuned. We'll be filming the process of disassembling them. Uh, of course, I gotta get the compression tool for it. I have the internal compression tool for, you know, like big Chevy uh, coils. We are strutting our stuff today. Strut that ass, strut that ass, strut that ass, strut. <laughs> Literally, it is a strut world today. We took the struts off of the 72 yesterday. Uh, I'm getting ready for a disc brake conversion. This, believe it or not, this is a brand new conversion. Somebody put it on this chassis that I got a hold of and never used it. You can see that the pads are just full. I mean, they've never been used. There's brand new pads in there. So this is gonna get sandblasted and then probably turned again. It'll look like brand new when done. And I'll inspect the bearings and see if they need replaced. And I'm gonna buy a strut kit and remove the, you know, put the compression tool on it, remove the bearing from the top, and then take this cartridge out of here. And I'm gonna buy the kit to replace all this, the boot, and I'll sandblast this and you reuse this, I'll sandblast all this and have it nice and painted. I've never actually done a conversion and I see there's a lot of other things that I had no clue that it would replace, that you'd have to replace. And I'm glad all of this is on that chassis. But you see mine, the ball joint comes from here. It goes into the arm. On this one, the ball joint is in the arm. So I'll just have these put, this is off of the chassis. And then you see, if you put this right up with the bolt on there, it's longer. And even the, even the sway bar is different. It spreads out further. So I started looking at making sure, you know, what is the difference? So it's a 73 chass chassis over there, and this is a 72. I have seen difference where they, they have a different part number for this. I don't understand why. The two of them look different, but they, they do the same thing and they fit in the hole the same way the shock tower bearing at the top. So I got to looking at it wondering why the distance is longer on that. And if you see the ball joint sits very close to the rotor here and then the ball joint here is angled. Now you can see it by the tube. It's just offset a little bit from from the shock tower tube. And you can see this is way down here from the shock tower tube. So that is the additional distance. And then if you look at the sway bar, this is the sway bar off of the chassis over there. And you put this right there and you can see that it's longer. So I need all of the above to put it on. So my new owner, the young woman, from Green Cove Springs is going to get new bushings in the suspension. I'm going to get new sway bar bushings, new arm bushings, new ball joints, and uh, 
So I have new disc brakes on the front. Got everything here. Just wait for my compression tool. And today I'm gonna pick out and order what I need for that. And I'll go ahead and get all these bushings so I can get them pressed in and pressed out. All right, that's where we are with the 72. The V-Dub Factory. The V-Dub Factory is a family-oriented shop that offers VW parts for a more affordable price with excellent customer service. Come down to the V-Dub Factory in Ocala, Florida. Hey guys, it's Dalton. I hope you guys liked the video. If so, hit the like button, leave a comment down below, and hit the subscribe button. Stay tuned for another video of a 1970 convertible Beetle that we are introducing. It will be for sale whenever we are finished doing the repairs that we have to do on it, but have a just bugging of a day.